week, we asked you to get rid of things you didn't need and that you couldn't afford. Some of you struggled with this challenge, and a number of you exceeded your own expectations and also our own expectations. So great job, everyone. Now, last week, you did an amazing job and raised a total of $137,515. These people are putting themselves deeper and deeper into debt because of their addiction to vehicles. And it's time for an intervention. So right about now, you must be wondering how you will be getting around this week. We have another challenge for you one that you all can participate in and that will help you reach your $100,000 goal. Yay! Oh, okay. There you go. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Did you think you could do it when you started? Uh, no. Crossing the finish line was a huge accomplishment for this community. We are back with the lovely Dr. Jody Sam. Hello. How you doing? I am doing fabulous. How are you? I'm glad. Nice to have you here. Thank you for having me. Miss Million Dollar Neighborhood. <laughs> I prefer the Million Dollar Doctor. Okay. <laughs> million Dollar Doctor is good. Now, you're a clinical psychologist. I mean, how long did that take you to become that? A long time. 11 years of schooling to get wow. to where I am. Now, did you think that this was going to be your job is to be clinical psychologist for TV or sitting somebody on the couch? No, never. I mean, when I was about this big, I used to always say to my parents, I want to be a doctor when I grow up, um, and I want to take care of you. That's what I used to say. Um, but I am terrified by the sight of blood. So since the time I've been little, <laughs> I would pass out. So I'd cut my finger, and I would pass out. And I very quickly realized that uh, uh, traditional medicine wasn't going to be what I was going to go into. Mm, okay. yeah. And I love talking. So two right. things I always got in trouble for in school. Um, talking too much <laughs> and, and passing notes. And, and a psychologist seemed to be a real nice fit. Hey, there you go. Now, when you were little, though, I mean, to become the clinical, clinical psychologist, you put, like, your little friends on the couch and, then, <laughs> and sit there and, and ask them questions? Well, you know, I've, I've always been a connector. Yeah. And one of these people that, you know, has was always the one that people would come to me to tell me their problems, um, that would talk to me. I, you know, I think I'm a good listener. Mm -hmm. um, and it just felt like something that was really, really naturally. And, and genuinely, I mean, I did a lot of volunteer work through um, high school and then through my undergrad and okay. doing peer counseling, crisis line work. And I just found that um, I just really loved being able to connect with people when mm -hmm. they're in difficult times. Nice. Now, how did you become a psychologist for the Million Dollar Neighborhood, though? Well, I got into media work kind of by happenstance a number of years ago. Yeah. Um, I'd say probably about five, six years ago now. I It just started by me being contacted by local media to mm -hmm. comment on behavioral issues. And you think about it, I mean, psychology really impacts every part of all of our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. Exactly. So I used to go on local media. I started to go on a local community show. Um, I was an expert in all three seasons of um, a show called Confessions Animal Hoarding. Right, right. Um, and then I got approached by the Oprah Winfrey Network to host um, this show, which was which has been a fabulous experience. Now, did you meet Oprah? Well, that's between us girls. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> so now, how do you take your game to the next level, though? I mean, to get noticed. To get noticed? I don't know. Well, it's funny. I get a lot of people that will say to me, you know, mm -hmm. how did you get to where you're at? And, and, and did you imagine this is where you would be? Right. And the people that are closest to me know. I, I used to say years ago, um, I love entertaining. And I, and I say, I wish I could sing or I wish I could dance mm -hmm. because I think I'm born to be an entertainer. Um, and I've been able to combine these two loves for what I do in this absolutely amazing way. And I used to say, you know, I just need to meet Oprah once and I'm going to convince her to give me my own show. <laughs> I, I used to truly say that. And, and I'm a firm believer in the power of intention. Hey, it, it so works. It, I believe it absolutely does. So putting out to the universe the things that you want brought to you. And, mm -hmm. and I feel very fortunate and, and truly blessed to be able to have the opportunities that I have had through, through this and other experiences. Nice. Now, how do you stay on point 
and not get emotional when you start talking to some of these people about some of their behaviors? Yeah, that, I mean, that's a great question. I would say that certainly has been something that over time I've gotten better at. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was kind of early years of starting to do this work. I mean, it, it is impossible to turn off the emotions right. completely. And in fact, I mean, part of what allows me to do my job and do it well is to be able to connect. Mm -hmm. And to do that, I have to feel things. And, right. and I feel like I'm not shy to experience human emotions, so I'm not a robot. And, and if you're telling me a distressing story and I'm sitting here poker face, and not showing any emotion, mm -hmm. you're not going to feel heard by me, right. right? So I actually don't see it as a weakness to be able to show the human human side of who I am and how I'm reacting to things that are that are told to me. Okay, I like that. Now, you consult a lot of shows, man, and there's some shows in particular. I mean, when, when you're talking to these people in in about saying finding love, I mean, do you actually tell them how to go about doing it or? Or, or are you helping them finding that point? Well, see, I believe we can't tell anyone yeah. to do anything, right? Even the people that are closest to us, as much as we might want to some of the time. And, and I really think that my role is that of a coach. Okay. So, you know, I say to people, you're the expert in you, right? So if I were to say, Valentine, you and your life, you're the expert in your life. And mm -hmm. you can think of me as an objective party that can observe, give feedback, and help coach you and guide you toward kind of really your maximum potential. Right. Nice. Okay. I don't want to leave anything out there. <laughs> I mean, how do you motivate your clients, though? You know, I, I think the first and, well, the, the most important piece is to be able to develop a trusting relationship right. first and foremost so making sure that people are feeling comfortable mm -hmm. that they're not feeling judged that they're feeling safe and right. I think when any of us are put in a circumstance where we feel that trust we open up right and, and we show all parts of ourselves the mm -hmm. good bad and the ugly which all of us have in some capacity yes. and and I think it's truly being able to understand people and, and I think many of us don't have or have very few people in our life that truly, truly, truly understand who we are. Right. Now, on the grind question, mm -hmm. all the people out there, they haven't gone to school for 11, 12 years or whatever it is. They're out there grinding, trying to get to where you are, but not getting any love from anybody. What can you tell them to inspire them to stay on the grind, to sit in your chair? Mm -hmm. Drink lots of coffee <laughs> to, to stay up a lot, to do a lot of work, number one. <laughs> Just joking. Um, I mean, really, I think it's, it's doing and putting your 110% into what you love to do. And mm -hmm. I think when we're passionate about something and doing it not for the end goal, like I'm not here because this was my end goal. Mm -hmm. I'm here because I love doing what I do. I love being a psychologist. I love being able to connect with people. And I love being able to provide assistance and guidance to people when they're struggling. Right. And that's what my focus was on. So I'm not here. I mean, I'm not, I'm not an actor. I wasn't trying to be a host or to be on TV. I was trying to be a psychologist. Mm -hmm. And I think I do that well. And when you can do anything that you're doing really well, stay focused on that, that eventually the other things will start to come. Nice. And what's next for you? Because you know there's something on, in the works, isn't there? <laughs> I mean, what, well, that? if I told you, I'd have to kill you. You know. And we wouldn't want. Well. You we did, want, Valentine. We, we, we want to know. We want to know what, what well, you're going to be doing next. I don't know. Well, I, I am actually heading off in four days okay. to um, Toronto. Nice. I am going to be, uh, we got picked up. So Million Dollar Neighborhood got picked Beautiful. up for a second season. Thank you very much. Um, so we're starting principal photography in a week. So I'm in the process of not sleeping much and packing up everything to, to move. Um, and I'll be, we'll be filming until November. So nice. season two will be airing in January, 2013. What time can we see it? Uh, I, I don't know what the new airtime is going to be, but season one is repeating right now. So okay. it's, it's on the Oprah Winfrey Network. I think it airs about nine or 10 times a week. Okay. Um, we got picked up by Oprah Winfrey Network in the US as well. Nice. Um, which has been fabulous. So, so our release dates are just getting announced. Okay. And I mean, quickly, with obstacles and sacrifices to being, you know, in your situation. Well, tell, tell us some of those that you had to go through. Yeah, you know, there, there's been a number. I mean, one of the things is I'm, I'm in an industry that still is, is male-dominated. And mm -hmm, being mm -hmm. a younger woman of color um, puts me in, you know, a particular circumstance where, you know, it isn't always easy. And, and right. people may respond a particular way because of how I'm presenting. Mm -hmm. um, I think in this industry that probably the most challenging thing for me has been dealing with 
the egos, which there is no shortage of. <laughs> <laughs> right, and, and you would know this well. So, so, so the big egos that, uh, you know, just can be a royal pain some of the time. And, and what I've had to learn is that all I can do is be me. And if exactly. I can get up every day and do my best at being who I am and go to bed saying, you know what, I've carried and conducted myself in a way that I am proud of, that's all I can do. And, nice. and I feel like that has served me well. It doesn't always feel like it, right? In the short term, some of the time you're thinking, eh, should I, you know, fill in the blanks, do this, be glad or do this, do that. And you step back and think that the best we can do is just live our, live our lives in a good, honest, value-driven manner. Nice. I want to thank you for coming. Thank you awesome. for having me. Thank you so much. Million Dollar Neighborhood, the host. I'm your man, Valentine. I want to thank our sponsors, Aerocar, ProVision, Michael Fraser for coming through, Dr. Jody Sham Samra, Million Dollar Neighborhood, we're loving that. I'm your man Valentine, baby. If you think it's your time to shine, you need to get on the ground with your man Valentine. Get at me at Facebook, Twitter, you know where we at. Just get at us any way you can. It's on the grind, baby. Thank you. Dr. Samra. Nice.